Hello guys, good evening all. Am I audible? Yes, so tell me where were we in the last class? <clears throat> Yes or what happened? Acha, I was sick. Yeah, I had fever that day on Monday. So I thought of, you know, taking rest. So yeah, I was leave on that day. Fine now, like it's what it was not, you no know, COVID and all. So yeah, I was a bit worried, but better now. Yeah. Maybe some flu or something. Yes, yeah, so we, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, so we had done uh, the second law of thermodynamics. Correct, we have discussed about entropy and second law of thermodynamics we finished. Okay, so uh, next we are going to start gives free energy, which is the last part of thermodynamics. Correct, and the second portion of this chapter is left then, which is thermochemistry. So most probably today, we'll finish this chapter. Okay. <clears throat> second law of thermodynamics we have not done. Just a second, Ajiti. Let me just check. We have done second law of thermodynamics. I can see the notes. We have done till TDS is equal to du plus PDV, right? Yeah, so that is it. Second law is done over there. Yes, that's it. We have just statement of second law. That is it. Nothing much. And then we have given the combined statement of first law and second law, which is TDS is equal to DU plus PDV. So that is it, it's done. Okay, so next you see, um, see just starting this particular you know, uh, topic here, let's just, back and just, just recall a few things. Okay. If you remember, we had discussed spontaneous process, correct? Right? Spontaneous process. And there are two conditions for this. What are those conditions? The condition says, are enthalpy change negative and delta S, the entropy change positive. Means randomness is increasing, yes? This is what we had discussed. If a process is taking place, the process will be spontaneous under two conditions. Either the enthalpy should decrease, means the process would be exothermic, or the entropy should increase. Delta S greater than zero. These are two conditions we had discussed, right? So first we'll talk about randomness and then we'll, okay, to find out randomness or to measure randomness, we have we got we have got a new thermodynamic term and that is entropy and the entire thing about entropy we discussed right now here what we are going to understand because this is also temperature dependent function this is also temperature dependent function we know if temperature increases entropy increases so both terms are temperature dependent so now what we thought because suppose any process is given you need to first analyze uh, enthalpy or you need to analyze entropy, right? 
in order to understand the spontaneity of that particular process, right? So what we do instead of analyzing two different terms, now we thought of what? That we'll combine the two term and we'll give a new thermodynamic term. Based on that, we can say directly whether the process is spontaneous or not. Okay, so in, in this way, like, like this was a thought process and what we got into this, we got a new thermodynamic term that we call it as Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy is represented by G and it is given to understand or analyze the spontaneity of any process. Like we, instead of analyzing two different terms, delta H and entropy, we will analyze, uh, you know, Gibbs free energy. We have a condition of Gibbs free energy. Like under this condition, the process will be spontaneous. So we will analyze only Gibbs free energy. And if that condition is satisfied, the process is said to be spontaneous. Okay. So what is Gibbs free energy? It is a thermodynamic quantity. It is a thermodynamic quantity and is, it is equals to the amount of the amount of useful work done. The amount of useful work done by work done by the system. Keep that in mind. It is by the system. Amount of useful work done by the system is equal to is equal to decrease in decrease in the value of Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy. Right? So this is useful work done. We'll see there are two types of work done. Till now we were discussing about work done, work done only. So when only work done is mentioned, it means it is <clears throat> the pressure volume work done in general, right? If you have a piston cylinder system. But useful work done is non expansion work done. It is non expansion work done. Non expansion, or we also call it as non PV. You can also understand this by this way. Like, for example, you have, a, you know, suppose you have a, an object, of, suppose I have this pen in my hand, right? If I place this pen from this point to another point, from this room to another room, right? I have to do some work. And this work done equals to decrease in my gifts free energy, right? So if you do any work, you does work or sorry, if you do any work, that work will be done at the cost of your gifts free energy. Obviously there is no pressure volume thing over here. There's no expansion or contraction we have here. Uh, one second guys, just to
Yes. So useful work done is this. It is non-expansion work done. Correct. Where there is no pressure, where there is no volume things in, right? That is useful work done. So gives free energy is equals to the useful work done magnitude wise, if you see. Okay. So mathematically, mathematically you see, it is defined as it is defined as d is equals to h minus t s. So if you remember, I just said that in order to analyze this and this separately, we'll combine these two with the help of temperature and we'll give a new thermodynamic term, right? And based on that thermodynamic term, we can say the process is spontaneous or not. So how do we combine the two? We combine H and S enthalpy and entropy like this, correct? T is the temperature. If you look at the change in Gibbs free energy, delta G is equals to delta H minus T delta S. Okay, this equation, we call it as Gibbs Hemholtz equation. Gibbs Hemholtz equation. Right, so we'll see what is the condition for delta G for gives energy for process to be spontaneous, we'll see the condition, right? But the physical significance of delta G, whatever I said, it is the decrease, it is a useful work, right? What is the physical significance of every energy we have that you see? physical significance. So like I said, we have two component of work over here and that is expansion work and we have non-expansion work. Expansion and non-expansion, okay. Non-expansion is nothing but, like I said, is the useful work we have. Useful work. Okay. Expansion, the work in which pressure volume term, like P delta V that we calculate, it is the expansion work. Okay. Suppose if you rub your hand, right? If you rub your hand, you will feel some heat. That is non-expansion work. Okay. If you place the box from this point to another point, that is non-expansion work. So that kind of work is useful work we have over here. Okay. Remember I have given you the definition of gives free energy and there we have work done by the system. Correct. So what I am assuming here, with this condition, the condition I am taking, if Q is the Q is the heat absorbs, absorbed by the system, by the system and
and W is the work done. W is the work done by the system. Work done by the system. Correct. So if you see, if I write down from first law of thermodynamics, delta U is equals to is equals to Q minus W because we are working by the system. So minus W will write down this way. So basically, Q is equals to what? Delta U plus work done. Now further, if I write down, because work done has two component, delta U plus we have work done expansion plus work done non-expansion. Copy down this. I'll go to the next slide. Two component of work we have expansion and non expansion. Okay, so next time you see if I write down this expansion work, so that would be Q is equals to delta U and expansion work we can write P delta V. So work done by the system, I have taken the sign convention earlier also if you see, that's why I have written Q is equals to U plus W. Right, so here I have taken P delta V. Right, minus W I have taken on the top. Plus, this I'll write down with this, and this would be non expansion work. Non expansion, right? What is this term? Could you tell me? This would be the enthalpy change, delta H. Okay. And this Q we can write Q is equals to T delta S because entropy change formula is what? It's Q by T. So Q is T delta S, isn't it? So what we can write here, you see, T delta S equals to delta H plus work done non expansion. So work done non-expansion non-expansion equals to minus minus of delta H minus T delta S. This is nothing but the change in Gibbs free energy. So further we can write this as the non-expansion work done or useful work is equals to minus delta G. So if you write down this in this expression in words, what you will write? The useful work done by the system or non-expansion work done by the system is equals to the decrease in gift-free energy of the system. 
isn't it? Okay. So decrease in gifts free energy is the measurement of useful or non expansion work done by the system right down this point. This minus sign means gifts free energy is decreasing. So we'll write down here decrease in gifts free energy. equals to equals to useful work done by the system on this Clear? This is the physical significance of gives free energy. Clear? Done? Okay. Next write down standard free energy change. Standard free energy change. See standard free energy change is represented by delta G naught. This dot, which is written over here, this dot means standard it is. The condition is a standard, standard state we have, okay? What is the standard state, standard condition? Standard condition is we have one atmospheric pressure One atmospheric pressure and 298 Kelvin. Okay, 298 Kelvin and one atmospheric pressure. Write down, it is the it is the free energy change change at a standard condition, standard condition in which the reactants and the reactants and products and products are also in in their standard state standard state we'll talk about it what is the standard state of different different you know uh, molecules, atoms, okay, later in thermochemistry. Here it is not that useful. Just you need to know that the atoms must be there in standard state, the reactants or products that we have. 
So at a standard state, the free energy change will write like this. Every term will be at the standard condition. So delta G naught means free energy change at standard state. Standard free energy change equals to the enthalpy change at standard state minus the entropy change at standard state. This is the relation we have. Okay, at standard state. Copy this down. What is this? So this is not for... No, it's not isothermal process. You are, Anusha, you are talking about this for isothermal because temperature we have taken constant over there, right? Yeah, no, it's not like that. See, the thing is, any process generally we, uh, we are talking about in re reactions over here, right? Because in chemistry, mostly we'll deal with all these things for, with respect to a chemical reaction, correct? So in the chemical reaction, what happens? Any chemical reaction takes place at constant pressure and temperature. So whatever the you know reaction we have, that must we have at a given temperature. Hence, we'll take this temperature out over here. Condition we don't have such condition that it is for isothermal process and all. Okay. Yeah. So this is the standard state we have. Now we have a relation here. This relation you can, uh, you have to memorize, but uh, a little bit you should know about it. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, you should know about equilibrium constant. You know what is equilibrium constant? Tell me. See, I'll tell you a little bit of about this equilibrium constant, but we'll discuss this again in detail in chemical equilibrium. Yeah, 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 right. So a little bit we'll discuss about it. I uh, usually this chapter thermodynamics, I teach this chapter after finishing equilibrium because of this thing only, right? But since they have taken this chapter in the school early, so because of the school thing, I have taken this chapter also before equilibrium. But usually we used to teach this chapter after finishing equilibrium because of this thing only here you don't understand about equilibrium. So uh, let me just discuss a few things about this equilibrium constant, just expression you should know, and then we'll come back again to this point. Okay. See, so first, so first of all, equilibrium constant is uh, you know represented by Kc is the constant. You can also write simply K or Kp also you can write. Okay, K, K, C, K, P, anything you can write. Okay. If you have a reversible reaction, it is defined for a reversible reaction. If you have a reversible reaction, A gives B. Reversible means forward, backward, both the reaction may proceed. So we can always calculate the ratio of the product Concentration, this is square bracket means the concentration. Concentration of what? Product. Concentration of product by concentration of reactant. We can always calculate this. The moment reaction starts, we can start calculating the concentration of reactant, whatever it is. Right? So when the reaction starts, A starts converting into B. So we'll get some amount of B. So any point, you take the concentration of D and concentration of A, and we can find out this ratio. This ratio is as Q. That is reaction quotient. 
रिएक्शन कोशेंट राइट क्यू इज वॉट इज रियक्शन कोशेंट कॉपी दिस जॉन एल गो टू द नेक्स्ट लाइन Now, since A is converting into B, so obviously we can also write this as concentration of the product, which is B, divided by the concentration of reactant, which is A, at any point of time. Now, when you find out the ratio of product and reactant at time T is equals to T equilibrium. when at equilibrium constant time you will find out the ratio then this ratio is said to be kc which is the equilibrium constant did you get my point how many of you understood this tell me ratio of product by re and reactant at equilibrium is called equilibrium constant if you find out the ratio of product and reactant at any point other than equilibrium so here this is t does not equals to t equilibrium <laughs> but why means what or <laughs> ratio of the concentration of product and concentration of reactant That's what Chitis. Yeah, or just what's the one second? I'm coming to your question. Chitis got it. So either we take concentration of reactant and product, or we can also take pressure if the gaseous phase reaction is there. So when you take the concentration of reactant divided by the concentration of product, that that ratio is said reaction quotient. Understood? Chitis understood. So just to understand like this, in detail we discuss this in chemical equilibrium, which is the next chapter we have. Okay, the equilibrium chapter is all about this equilibrium constant only. So we'll discuss that. But here, just you need to keep in mind, for any reversible reaction, at any point of time, you take the concentration of, you take the concentration of reactant, take the ratio of both, you will get reaction quotient. If the gaseous phase reaction is there, take the pressure of product. The pressure of reactant. Find out the ratio. That will be again the reaction quotient. Okay. Now equilibrium condition isn't a specific condition. Right. It has an a specific properties also. Right. It's not like you know uh, at any for any uh, reaction, equilibrium condition is very important. Right. So at equilibrium condition to define. Whether the equilibrium condition is maintained or not. For that, we have defined a specific term for this ratio, and that specific term is equilibrium constant. Okay, so Q is nothing but Kc at equilibrium. You can say, if equilibrium is not maintained, Q does not equal to Kc. Right. So sometimes what happens if uh, obviously we'll see this in a uh, next chapter. but why we have defined this term in order to understand the equilibrium condition is maintained or not so at equilibrium what we can write we can write q is equals to kc reaction quotient is nothing but equilibrium no k k is k is equals to at equilibrium it's not like that anusha value of k we are not bothering about it right now okay what should be the value of k it could be anything we don't know about it right but the value of k will be constant it depends only upon temperature that again we are not bothering about okay we'll, all these things we'll discuss in, in chemical equilibrium so k value could be anything okay when equilibrium is not maintained if equilibrium is not achieved then q does not equal to kc need to just keep this in mind nothing much the expression is what concentration of product by concentration of reactant this is the only thing which is required this chapter other things we'll discuss in chemical equilibrium 
Okay. So what happens? You will see this conversion arrow that some values will be given of reactant product. You need to find out whether the equilibrium is maintained or not. So what is the kind of equilibrium? We'll find out this Q and KC. There will be data. If this condition is coming out to be, it means equilibrium is maintained. That's how the specific term is given. Yes. Correct. Go ahead, guys. Tell me why or n you can type. Yeah. Correct. So, what is the relation of delta G and equilibrium constant or reaction quotient? The relation is this again, you have to memorize. This relation is delta G is equals to delta G naught plus RT ln Q. What is Q? You know now. Q is what? Q is reaction concentration of product by concentration of react. Okay. So if you write down the equilibrium condition at equilibrium, delta G equals to zero. This is the condition of equilibrium. We'll see this also after some time and becomes KC at equilibrium. So these two conditions will substitute here. We'll get the expression. Delta G naught is equals to minus RT ln KC. This is the expression we have. You know how to convert ln into log? You can write down this as Delta G naught is equals to minus 2.303 RT log KC. Or in terms of, if you want to write down, Delta G is equals to minus RT ln KC. From this, we will find out KC equals to E to R minus delta not by this delta g naught. Copy down this. How did we get this expression? That is not the concern. You just keep this expression as it is in mind. We'll discuss this later in other chapters. We'll see. Next chapter, probably we'll see. But this equation you must keep in mind at equilibrium condition. Now, if you draw the graph of this relation here, you see it is a logarithmic graph we have. So obviously the graph will be like this. So this one, y-axis is the um, what is the reaction code Q, and this side we have delta G naught x-axis delta G naught. This is the logarithmic graph. The graph goes like this. Okay, logarithmic graph graph goes like this. At some point, definitely the value of delta g is zero that point is suppose this we have at this point suppose that is zero and if this is zero you see here if this value is zero right then this means what the equilibrium is Corresponding value of Kc is what? Delta is not is zero. Kc value is what? This value is Kc. 
and this KC value is one if delta G naught is zero, isn't it? Write down this way. So when delta G naught is zero, you substitute here. Log value is one here, and since it is zero, it is nothing but the. Okay, only one I'll write down. Wait, yeah, that's fine. Okay, now towards the left of this point, we have negative delta G naught, and towards the right we have positive delta G naught. So whenever delta G is positive, you see whenever delta G naught is positive, is positive, means it is towards the right of it. The value of K C is what here also I'll write down K only. The value of equilibrium constant k is what? If it is positive, the value k is what? Is less than what? If it is negative, less than zero. You see, draw the graph. The value of k is greater than one. Greater than one, and when delta g is zero. Is zero, the value of k is equals to one, which is the condition. No doubt. Copy it. Okay. Now, the purpose of the objective to define Gibbs free energy. is to find out the condition of spontaneity that was the whole purpose if you go back and see i discussed that enthalpy and entropy was the two condition so they combined the two term and they have given the new term thermodynamic term that is gibbs free energy in order to understand the spontaneity of any process so the whole purpose is to understand the spontaneity of the spontaneity of the given process correct so what is the condition of spontaneity we have Okay, heading right down. All of you, condition of the spontaneity. We know all. We know all this fact that delta S total for a spontaneous process is greater than zero. This we know already. but this is the condition with respect to entropy only we have right so this is the condition with respect to entropy what is the condition with respect to delta g that we are trying to understand so you see here what i am assuming you see i am assuming since any reaction takes place at constant temperature and pressure so we are first of all we are assuming constant temperature and pressure so at this condition we assume that q amount of heat amount of heat given by the system to the surroundings to the 
surroundings and in this process obviously some amount of work must be done okay heat is given by the system to the surrounding system is giving heat so its entropy is decreasing and we can say that the amount of heat is given mathematically we can write minus q of system isn't it right so minus q of system equals to what we can write the heat is gained by the surroundings this is the relation we have magnitude wise heat is given by the system equals to heat is gained by the surroundings okay since we have constant pressure over here so this q of the system we know the heat content of the system at constant pressure is nothing but the enthalpy so we can write this delta h of the system negative we have here so a negative sign we have here did you understand this relation Yes, tell me. Parvati, you got it. Parvati, Anusha, Aditi. These three name I can see here. Yes. Okay. Anusha is there. Ansh, Ansh, respond. Ansh, where is Arya? Almost we are done. More minutes, like or ten fifteen minutes more. Yeah. Okay. So all of you understood this relation we have. Now, if I write down here delta S of delta s of surroundings is equals to what we can write plus q of the surrounding divided by t and this plus q of surrounding equals to minus delta h of the system so can we write this equals to Minus of delta H of the system divided by T, which further it becomes delta S of surrounding equals to minus delta H system by T. Now, the total entropy change expression we have delta S total is equals to delta S. Plus delta S surrounding delta S system. You let it be as it is, and delta S surrounding we can write delta H of the system divided by T with this expression. This equals to this. So I have written it over here. Clear. Yeah. Now, just we need to solve this. Simplify it. And then left hand side we have delta S total. Right hand side, if you see, it becomes minus of delta H of the system minus T delta S of the system divided by. T. So we can have. T delta S total equals to what is this term? Could you tell me? Delta H system minus T delta S system. This is delta G of the system, right? So delta G of system is what? Minus of T delta S total. And we know for a spontaneous process, 
delta s total is what greater than zero and hence t delta s is negative so the point i want to understand here this is the relation we got in this we'll apply some condition and we'll understand the relation here so see so first of all for a spontaneous process for a spontaneous process acha one second i'll go yeah okay so for spontaneous process we know the condition that is delta s total is greater than 0 means this term is positive this is positive so delta s system is what delta g system is always negative for spontaneous process is the condition we have for any reaction delta g if you find out to be negative it is a spontaneous process so rather than you know analyzing enthalpy and entropy with two terms we'll just analyze delta g if it is negative is spontaneous if it is positive then non spontaneous right for non spontaneous process the last one is at equilibrium we know delta s total equals to 0 when delta s total is 0 delta of the system also equals to 0 at equilibrium copied okay now the last part is chapter we have that is the role of temperature in spontaneity so we have the delta g is equals to delta h minus t delta s we have this relation now we are having here two different conditions the first condition we have means the process could be exothermic and it could endothermic also so i'm assuming exothermic process and we know for 
delta H is negative always. So first we are considering exothermic and then endothermic, that is it. Okay, so let expression, the expression of Gibbs, what we need to find out, we need to find out the spontaneity, right? For a spontaneity, what is the condition of delta G? Delta G must be what? For a spontaneous process, delta G must be negative, right? So we need to keep this delta G negative here. So what is the condition you see? Delta H is already negative because we have assumed exothermic it is negative, right? Depending upon T delta S, if it is negative or positive, we can easily understand this delta G is negative or positive. So two possibility also we have here. If T delta S is positive. If T delta S is positive means this term is positive. We already have a negative sign before. Delta H is already negative. Then delta G would be negative. So no, tell me. Delta G is negative for all temperature. Whatever the temperature you put, it is negative. Right, negative temperature, obviously, it's not like minus 10 degrees Celsius you put. Right, it is negative. And hence, the process is said to be spontaneous at all temperature. Spontaneous at all temperature. So for exothermic process, if T delta, if T is positive, the process is spontaneous at all process. Another condition is if T delta S is negative, if T delta S is negative, then for delta G to be negative. What is the condition? The condition is the magnitude of delta H must be greater than the magnitude of T delta S, isn't it? Can we say this condition for delta G to be negative? Are you getting it? Tell me. Yes, then only delta G would be negative. Okay. This condition can be achieved by, because we need to decrease this term, no? Achieved by decreasing temperature. So what we can say for exothermic process, if T delta S is negative, then the process will be spontaneous at low temperature. Write on this. For exothermic process, for exothermic process, if theta S is negative, if T delta S is negative, then this will be spontaneous at low temperature. Yeah, for exothermic process, for exothermic process, if T delta S is negative, T delta S is negative, then the process will be spontaneous at low temperature. Then Now, 
the second condition we have if the process is endothermic delta h is greater than 0 is greater than zero. so again you see the relation here the positive Delta S, we need to see this, right? So, if T Delta S is negative, what does this mean? If T Delta S is negative, then this is negative, 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 positive. It means Delta G is positive always, right? It will never be negative and the process will be non-spontaneous. It will be a spontaneous process in this condition. If again, the last one is if T delta S is positive, then the condition for spontaneity for delta G to be Delta G to be negative, right? The condition is what? The magnitude of T delta S should be more than the magnitude of delta H. And this condition can be achieved by increasing temperature. Tell me any doubt in this? Okay, no doubt, tell me. Right, so this is it for this particular thing, right? Thermodynamics, we are done, it's over. Thermochemistry, the second part which is, which is left, we'll start that also, but few before that, we'll discuss few questions on this. All three questions you try.
Dan. ओके ऑल द थ्री क्वेश्चंस ट्राई करो देन विल स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग ओके all the three questions you try and then we'll start discussing it all of you डन ओके सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी एट कंबशन रिएक्शन इट्स अ फैक्चुअल थिंग कंबशन रिएक्शन इज ऑलवेज एक्सोथॉमिक सो वेन एवर पार्टिक वुड सबस्टेंस बंस इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ एयर देर विल बी हीट इवॉल्व राइट so combustion is always exothermic process so delta h is negative so wherever we have positive value then eliminate okay delta s is already positive given in both options so there is no point of you know uh, concluding what would be delta s for this so let's go directly to delta g delta g what delta g we know combustion reaction any example if you see it just requires a proper initiation and then it burns on its own right so combustion reaction is spontaneous as well obviously delta g is negative right so delta h negative delta g negative we have only one option 
that is option C. Okay. Question number 79. For the reaction, this delta U is given, delta S is given. We need to find out whether it's spontaneous or not. So for spontaneous, the condition is what for spontaneity? Delta G not must be less than zero. This is what we need to find out. If it is at zero, then we'll be at equilibrium. Delta G we need to find out. Correct. So you see here, what is the formula of delta U? Okay. So delta H is equals to delta U plus delta NGRT or at standard state. So this, why we have to calculate delta H? Because we know delta G we need to find out. It is equals to delta H naught minus T delta S naught. This is already given in the question, right? Delta S naught is given. We need to find out delta H naught. So delta U naught is equals to minus 10. It's kilojoule here, right? It is joule, right? You must have to notice all these things. Unit is joule. Here it is kilojoule. So what we'll write here? We'll write 10 into 10 to the power 3 joule delta U plus. What is delta ng? 2 minus 2 minus 1, that is minus 1. R value must be in joule. So 8.314. Integrature is 300. What is this expression? Could you tell me? Tell me the value of delta h not here. What is the value of delta H not? Tell me. Minus 12494.2. Is it? So this is minus 12. 494.2. Okay. Which further we can write minus 12.49 kilojoule approximately, right? Okay. So now you have this delta H naught, substitute this here, in kilojoule, minus 12.49, temperature is 300, and delta S over here is given minus 45, so minus 45 into 10 to the power minus 3. Tell me this value, whether you are getting negative or positive that is what you need to identify because spontaneity we need to judge if it is negative then it's spontaneous if it is zero then equilibrium no it is given in the question you see anusha it's given 300 kelvin right delta s is given at 300 kelvin yeah so what is this value negative or positive So it will be 0.3 into 2. Sorry, 0.3 into 45. Achha. Are we getting this minus 
and this would be plus of 13 point something, is it? Right? So plus of 13 point something, so five I'll take. Obviously this value is coming out to be greater than zero. So when delta G naught is greater than zero we are getting. So what is the meaning of this? It is B, non-spontaneous. Question number 80. Reversible reaction at temperature T, which of the following is correct? Reversible reaction we have, so we'll assume the equilibrium condition. Right? And at equilibrium, delta G would be zero. And when delta G is zero, T is equals to delta H by delta S. So option C is correct here. Clear? Eighty two, eighty three, eighty four, eighty Finish all four and then you can post your answer. One second, I'll go back. Done.
Okay, done. Yeah. Okay, so. The enthalpy of vaporization is given. Question number 82, you see. The entropy delta S Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, guys, am I audible? Yeah, actually, sorry, I lost connection some power interruption. Yeah, okay, fine. So this, so you see here, that where the enthalpy is given in kilojoule and options are in joule. So we'll just, you know, convert this. So 40.63 into 10 to the power three joule per mole divided by temperature must be in Kelvin. So 373. What is this value you are getting? All these kind of questions, no, units are very important, must take care of that. So answer here will be 108.9 approximately. So option B is correct, I guess. Yeah, so it is approximately 109, 108.9 Joule per mole Kelvin. Option B is correct for this one. Okay, now the next question you see, 83. The spontaneous process at all condition of temperature, which of the following is correct? Spontaneous process of delta S must be, you know, negative, right? Delta S must be negative. So this A and B option we can eliminate easily. And at all temperature, it was, it's the first case that we discussed, no? Because how do you proceed in this particular question? You write down the expression of delta G is equals to delta H minus T delta S. So at all temperature it is negative. This is negative. This is already negative exothermic. So for this temperature here, you see, if this enthalpy is negative over here, then for whatever the value of temperature you put, delta G is definitely negative. Means delta H must be negative. It is possible when the process is exothermic. Answer is option D, isn't it? Yeah.
Yes, so S is positive. No, that's what. This is positive. Question is what? Spontaneous? Okay, I, I make my. I thought it is delta G. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. That's right. My bad, guys. I thought delta G is written. Okay, no problem. So spontaneous delta S must be positive. So negative value option we can eliminate, right? This we can eliminate. And delta H is negative. So we'll have this option B. Yeah, that's B. I thought delta G, my bad. Okay. So this is the answer we have. A spontaneous process, which of the following is correct? Delta S total is positive. Have done this already. Option C is right. For reversible isothermal expansion of an ideal gas, tell me the answer 85. Reversible isothermal expansion. Right? Reversible isothermal expansion. The temperature of system and surrounding must be same. Right? So the entropy of system, if it decreases, then entropy of surroundings will increase by the same value. So their magnitude would be same. But the sign is opposite, right? So if delta S system is positive, delta S surrounding is negative. So option B is the answer we have here. Tell me, any doubt you have in this? See, all these conditions we have discussed already in the theory part, right? That's what I said you know, in the beginning, that here in this chapter, we have various conditions. And that conditions you need to keep in mind. And what conditions, how do we approach, right? So you see all these things we have discussed already. So you'll get questions like this in this chapter that you need to solve. I'll share the assignment also on this, okay? So we are moving next to the... Acha, one second. No, like one thing also is... Okay, these three questions you see. Oh, one second, one second. The relation of wins is this. Oh, let it be. This we haven't done yet. Few questions we haven't done yet. Let it be. So next we are going to start uh, thermochemistry.